the parable of the three kings from nathan the wise by gotthold ephraim lessing seventeen twenty nine to seventeen eighty one this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org nathan in the oldest times and in an eastern land there lived a man who had a precious ring this gem an opal of a hundred tints had such a virtue as would make the wearer who trusted it beloved by god and man what wonder if the man who had this ring preserved it well and by his will declared it should for ever in his house remain at last when death came near he called the son whom he loved best and gave to him the ring with one strict charge my son when you must die let this be given to your own darling child the son whom you love best without regard to any rights of birth twas thus the ring was always passed on to the best beloved sultan you understand me saladin yea go on nathan a father who at last possessed this ring had three dear sons all dutiful and true all three alike beloved but at one time this son and then another seemed most dear most worthy of the ring and it was given by promise first to this son then to that until it might be claimed by all the three at last when death drew nigh the father felt his heart distracted by the doubt to whom the ring was due he could not favor one and leave two sons in grief how did he act he called the goldsmith in gave him the gem and bade him make exactly of that form two other rings and spare nor cost nor pains to make all three alike and this was done so well the owner of the first true ring could find no shade of difference in the three and now he called his sons one at a time he gave to each a blessing and a ring one of the three and died saladin well well go on nathan my tale is ended you may guess the sequel the father dies immediately each son comes forward with his ring and asks to be proclaimed as head and ruler of the house all three assert one claim and show their rings all made alike to find the first the true it was as great a puzzle as for us to find the one true faith saladin is that then all the answer i must have nathan tis my apology if i decline to act as judge or to select the ring the one true gem of three all made alike all given by one saladin there talk no more of rings the three religions that at first were named are all distinct i down to dress food drink nathan just so and yet their claims are all alike as founded upon history on facts believed and handed down from sire to son uniting them in faith can we the jews distrust the testimony of our race distrust the men who gave us birth whose love did ne'er deceive us but when we were babes taught us by means of fables for our good must you distrust your own true ancestors to flatter mine or must a christian doubt his father's words and so agree with ours saladin allah the israelite is speaking truth and i am silenced nathan let me name the rings once more the sons at last in bitter strife appeared before a judge and each declared he had the one true gem given by his father all said the same and all three spoke the truth each rather than suspect his father's word accused his brethren of a fraud saladin what then 
What sentence could the judge pronounce? Go on. Nathan. Thus said the judge. Go bring your father here. Let him come forth, or I dismiss the case. Must I sit guessing riddles? Must I wait till the true ring shall speak out for itself? But stay. T'was said that the authentic gem had virtue that could make its wearer loved by God and man. That shall decide the case. Tell me who of the three is best beloved by his two brethren. Silent? Then the ring has lost its charm. Each claimant loves himself, but wins no love. The rings are forgeries. Tis plain the first authentic gem was lost, but keep this word with you, and hide his loss. Your father had these three rings made, these three instead of one. Saladin. Well spoken, judge, at last. Nathan. But stay, the judge continued, hear one word. The best advice I have to give, then go. Let each still trust the ring given by his father. It might be he would show no partial love. He loved all three, and therefore would not give the ring to one and grieve the other too. Go, emulate your father's equal love. Let each first test his ring and show its power, but aid it while you test. Be merciful, forbearing, kind to all men, and submit your will to God. Such virtues shall increase whatever powers the rings themselves may have. When these among your late posterity have shown their virtue in some future time, a thousand thousand years away from now, then hither come again. A wiser man than one now sitting here will hear you then and will pronounce the sentence. Saladin. Allah! Allah! Nathan. Now, Saladin, art thou that wiser man? Art thou the judge who will at last pronounce this sentence? Saladin grasps Nathan's hand and holds to the end of the conversation. Saladin. I, the judge? I'm dust. I'm nothing. Tis Allah. Nathan, now I understand. The thousand thousand years have not yet passed. The judge is not yet come. I must not place myself upon his throne. I understand. Farewell, dear Nathan. Go. Be still, my friend. End of the Parable of the Three Kings from Nathan the Wise by Gothold Ephraim Lessing, 1729 to 1781.